That is available for sale, so looking at transport and wastes in plants. There's a tissue in a plant, and it's called the floor. It moves sap from leaf to root and allows the plant to grow. It takes glucose from a source, and it sends it down below. The glucose goes to starch, and you're left with a potato. So science understands we're going to look at transport of the products of photosynthesis and some mineral nutrients occurs by translocation in the phloem and they may be stored for later use. So describe the transport and storage of materials in the plants and in plants waste material may be removed or stored. So we've talked about photosynthesis before. This is where glucose is made from carbon dioxide and water and oxygen is released as a byproduct. Glucose is an energy storage molecule um, but the glucose can also be multiplied by chemical reactions in the plants to make amino acids which are used to make proteins. Glycerol, which is a component of uh, fats and oils, lipids, which are fats and oils, and also starch, which is a large energy storage molecule made up of lots of glucoses joined together. So sugars, amino acids, minerals, and hormones, they're all transported through a vascular tissue in plants that's called phloem. So we've talked about xylem, the other side of xylem is phloem. A mixture of these substances um, and water is called phloem sap, and it travels from the leaves to the rest of the plant. So whereas we had xylem, we had the water and minerals moving from the roots up to the leaves, um, the phloem can kind of move both ways and go up and down depending on uh, what's happening in the plant. The sugar moves through a process called translocation. This is where we have a source, like the leaves of the plant, or the sugar storage organs, and then we have a place that needs that sugar and we call that a sink. This could be the roots of the plant or it could be flowers. So here we have an example. So here we have sucrose, which is a sugar, um, in a leaf cell. It's traveling through a companion cell and then into the phloem. From the phloem we have water going in here. So we have a high concentration at the top, we have a low concentration down at our sink, our root cell. This is where we need the sugar to go. So we get water carrying the sugar down the phloem until we get to the companion cell. And then we have the uh, sugar going into our sink. So this movement is known as the mass flow hypothesis. So we have active transport of sugar um, into the phloem vessels from source cells. There's a high concentration inside the phloem, so we need to pump the sugar in using energy from the cell. Since there's a high concentration of sugar in here, we need to get water coming in too water will move through osmosis from a region of low to high concentration. So this is more sugary, so you need more water in there to balance out the concentrations. So we have a bit of pressure at the top where we've got water pushing in. Down the bottom where we've got our sink cell, we get sugar moving out. And as the sugar moves out, we have a difference in pressure from the top to the bottom. So water pushes its way down, and this pushes the sap through the, through the phloem uh, to our sink cell. Water moves out of the phloem at the bottom and goes into the xylem, and again that leads to a difference in pressure. So we get this pushing of the sap through the phloem uh, from the source to the sink. We can see that in this diagram here. So here we have our start, we've got high sugar, we get water coming in to balance out that concentration that um, provides a force. And at the end of the phloem we have uh, sugar coming out, so we have low sugar concentration, and we have water leaving, so there's a difference in water pressure on from this side to this side. And that leads to this movement of the sap. Now we can join glucose together to make a larger energy molecule called starch. So in plants they make starch, um, in animals we make a different compound called glycogen. The starch is stored in leaves, stems and roots, and then the plant can use though the stored sugar later on. So in times where there's lots of sugar being produced, it can store it. Then in lean times like winter, it can burn off that sugar and transport that sugar to other parts of the plant. So since it's just made of lots of glucoses joined together, you can break those ones between the glucoses and then the, that glucose can be sent to other parts of the plant. Here we have some cassava roots. So these are examples of uh, roots where starch is being stored. Now where the starch is stored depends on the plant. Um, carrots, we have an enlarged root. So here's a carrot over here, and this is called a root tuber. And there's many examples of these. Potatoes are another good example of a plant storage organ. Um, potatoes are what's called a stem tuber. We can see some potatoes over here. In celery, we can see that the starch is stored in the stem. That's what gets um, enlarged here. In spinach, we have the leaves. That's where the uh, starch is being stored. So depending on the plant, different plants, you get different areas where the extra starch is stored. Uh, now it's an important thing to note that fruits aren't an energy storage place. Uh, fruits are produced by plants in order to attract animals, and those seeds need to be dispersed in order to um, make the plant more successful. So it's spreading its genes over a larger area. The plant can send sugar in, but it can't really take sugar back out. So that's why the fruits aren't a sugar storage area. Now we need to talk about plant waste. So um, plants, like all organisms, they produce waste products from their cellular processes. Now plants can either store the waste products or they can excrete the waste products. If we look at some of the waste uh, gases, for example, carbon dioxide, water and oxygen, these diffuse out of the leaves through stomata. We can produce excess water, this happens through transpiration, but also through respiration of the cells, so the water vapour can leave through the stomata. Oxygen is a byproduct of, of photosynthesis, so it can pass through too. 
carbon dioxide comes in through stomata, but it's also leaving through stomata due to respiration. So we get those gases leaving through the leaves. Resins and other compounds can be stored in dead xylem tissue, and this is in the center of the trunk. Some trees store waste in leaves or bark, and when that those leaves or bark fall off, that gets rid of the waste from the plant. But in terms of the cells themselves, uh, water and other nutrients can be stored inside the large central vacuoles of plant cells. They have this large central vacuole in their cells that we don't have, and that's good for storing things like water and salts and sugars and so on. So the plant can use them in times uh, when there isn't as much of that stuff around. We're going to look at a special case, which is mangroves. So in mangroves, you have these plants that are growing in a semi-salty area. So there's a bit of fresh water on one end, but there's also salt water on the other end. So they have to be able to tolerate salt, and this is a product that they need to get rid of. So to deal with this, uh, different mangrove plants deal with it in different ways. So some mangrove trees, they have glands in leaves that excrete salt. So here we see, can see a mangrove leaf, and you can see salt crystals growing on it. So this is a way to get rid of that salt. Um, the salt can be toxic if it builds up to too high a concentration inside the plant. Some mangrove trees store salt in the leaf cell vacuoles, and then as the leaves die, they fall off and they take the salt with them, and that gets rid of the salt from the plant. Another way to do it is to try and reduce the amount of water that the plant is losing, and it can do that by opening the stomata infrequently. That means they only really open when they're necessary, when it's really necessary to allow gases to come in and out. If the stomata stayed open all the time, then too much water loss would occur, the plant would lose too much water, and it would die due to the buildup of salt. Today in Flipping Science, we looked at transporting plants, but also how plants deal with waste. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.